we saw Bill Shorten uh, on Insiders this morning, and he clearly was more than happy to jump outside of his lane, speak very generally about all different things, remind us all about the potential future that we could have had. Um, I didn't think, and, and well done to Spearsy for actually laying the trap and Short, and I'll give him credit for this, he didn't fall into it, which was, uh, if you'd won the election, you would have been Prime Minister. How would you have handled coronavirus? <laughs> he, he did march around it, but it's probably the only smart decision that Shorten made in his interview today. But he also decided to bear hug the position of Joel Fitzgibbon when it comes to gas as the transitional uh, uh, fuels to get us to renewables. Now, this is a position that the Prime Minister and that the Federal Government is going to slowly get towards as well, is that, look, if it can't be coal, it'll be gas, and after gas, it'll be something else. But Albo, speaking in the Turnbull Times, where, of course, they so desperately care about this, um, Joel Fitzgibbon was, gets, he was slapped down, he was rebuked for having such a position. So for Shorten to come out and double down on this, well, it means this becomes an active issue in the next little while. Now, interestingly, again, James McGrath, Another little thing that's happened under the cover of COVID is remember when, at the start of the year, Albo was on Insiders, and we spent some time going through that appearance, and please, it's in the archives at skynews.com.au. I thoroughly recommend you go and have a look. But that's the day where he was all up for the 50% uh, uh, targets, and actually, you know, by 2050, we get to net zero, way bigger than anything Shorten was on offer. He even actively in that uh, interview agreed with a CSIRO uh, suggestion that it would cost one T trillion dollars to be able to transition uh, uh, the system uh, to, to, to a new power grid, all the rest of it, right? But interestingly, remember, he then also tried to turn around and say, well, uh, no, we're technology agnostic now. Well, of course, all climate policy has to go through national conference. What was the shit fight that has been cancelled because of coronavirus? The National Conference of the ALP. Which means, James, that this can go on for another 12 months. With a freewheeling, the I'm for this, I'm, but it won't come to a head. Which means they kick it down the road. Supposedly the biggest issue in the country gets kicked down the road for another 12 months. 12 months closer to an election, 12 months closer to have this fight and shorten well, unsurprisingly, is going to end up trying to want to have it both ways on this. What do you think about what happened with Shorten today and where the ALP sits not resolving this for another 12 months? Oh, as chairman of, of the Bill Shorten Appreciation Society, I was happy to see that, that Bill is out and he's trailing the leadership baton around to remind everybody of his skills and his attributes and to remind everybody, especially here in Queensland, why the LNP has 23 out of the 30 seats. Hmm. Uh, I thought Bill's performance today was was actually disgraceful, particularly in the way he tried to attack the Prime Minister mm. uh, and say it was the Prime Minister's fault that we had all the dodgy dodgy happenings going on in those hotels down in, in Melbourne because the Federal Government has responsibility for quarantine in the Constitution. It was just a stunt -a -rama from from that guy. But it just shows that neither Bill nor Albanese or the modern Labor Party understand Queensland and understand what gas means and what coal means in Queensland. It means jobs. Mm. Now, I've just spent the last week driving down from Cairns uh, to, to uh, Brisbane, spent a night in Gladstone. We all remember Gladstone is where he went up to that mm. worker and told that worker that, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll look into tax cuts for you. Come off it. You know, these people can see through modern labour. They can see that modern labour is built on this pyramid of fakeness, of saying one thing to the, the latte set down in Melbourne and Sydney and trying to say something different up here, but we can see through it. And they fail to understand it is about jobs. What? It's about people having jobs and earning money and getting on with their lives. Well, and as we know, right, is that, remember, when that confrontation happened during the election campaign, uh, that was a Queensland government run site. The bloke's security pass cancelled the next day, lost his job because he stood up, of course, and exposed the dear leader for, uh, for what he is. But, you know, the Emperor hath no clothes at the moment in Albo. The left-leaning essential poll has shown that only 45% of Labor voters think he's the preferred Prime Minister. That's why I think Shorten thinks there's an opportunity here. Uh, so less than half of half of the country believes that he is their preferred option. 29% say Scott Morrison, that's Labor voters, and 26% don't know. So Shorten thinks there's an opportunity here to begin the slow chip away at, uh, at Albo, doesn't he? 
I think there's no chance in heck that even if there were to be a leadership spill, they would vote back in the man who lost the unwinnable election. I agree, but it doesn't mean he's not going to try. No, it That's doesn't my mean point. he's not going to try. But if I was Elbow, I would be right. nervous about not, not so much Shorten, but someone like Fitzgibbon, who is towing a far more reasonable line. He's come out probably because he nearly lost his hunter seat last <laughs> election, mm -hmm. but he has come out straight strong on coal, strong on gas, he's lobbying his, well, the Otis group at large, but others in the party to support the Morrison's government's 2030 mm. emissions reductions targets. He's making a lot more sense and he's speaking the language of a massive base of the Labor Party that is just hands off going, you guys have gone way too wild on this climate change thing. I think I, I, he's the one who'd be making me nervous if I was elbow, not, not short.